All right, what's going on, guys? I had to change my battery. Life water. I am uh, doing this water regimen because my uh, my DOT physical is Friday, so drinking a lot of water. So we about to get up and go. We about to get up and roll. And um, in the midst of getting up and rolling, we are gonna do this episode of Lockout Men. Mates the call. Welcome back to the stage of history. Now check it out. Now check it out. We about to we about to do this episode of uh, Lockout Men. Mates the call. Now you guys know in the previous video we have plenty of different divisions there um, for, for all taste. So you can pretty much find So you guys know that I talked with um, Edwin about the company that he <clears throat> that he drove for. And the company that he drove for was uh, Bennett Motor Express. Um, he gave an interesting outlook of the company. So I guess I was interested to find out more about the company. And this is what I'm about to do. I'm about to call them and get a little bit more information about Bennett Motor Express. Thank you for calling the Bennett International Group Recruiting Department. One of our driver recruiting specialists will be with you shortly. Safety is priority. Thank you for calling Bennett Motor Express. We're safe, there's no more priority. This is Penny. I'm help you. Hey, Penny. How you doing? I'm fine. And yourself? I'm all right. I'm all right. Um... Are you a recruiter? Yes, I am, sir. Oh, okay, okay. Well, about a day ago, I have spoken with uh, with a gentleman named Edwin Rodriguez. Okay. And uh -huh. uh, and he was giving me some uh, some good information about uh, Bennett Express. So. Okay. I'm taking it upon myself to uh, give you guys a call to uh, find out a little bit more, if I may. Okay, and who am I speaking with? My name's Sean. Which one, sir? Sean. Okay, and where do you live at, Mr. Sean? I am out of Ohio, Cleveland. Gotcha. And um, I'm at, do you have flatbed experience? I'm sorry? Do you have flatbed experience? Um, unfortunately, no. Uh, but he did tell me that you guys have, uh, other divisions, though. Okay, and how long you been driving? Seat? What do you say, you? Uh, I've been driving for three years. Okay, well, um, we do have a band division, but at the moment we're not doing much hiring out with that because um, we're trying to switch over those drivers over to our um, flatbed division. Um, oh, okay. And we gave it a start program in which, you know, those drivers when we start training with that. Um, now we do require a six month flatbed experience. Okay, okay. Um, yes, sir. You, why, why are you guys um, eliminating the van division? We're not eliminating it altogether. It's just a little bit slow on that side at this time. Oh, very good. Um, could you, yes, sir. Uh, well, basically, I'm just calling just to get general information about the company. That's, okay. Well, I can send you um, some information. Um, what is your email address, sir? Other than the uh, van division, he, he mentioned something about um, hot. Uh, what's that? Hot shot, where you can yes. where you can drive a pickup and pick up um, pick up like RVs and stuff like that. Uh, could you go yes, over? No, I can. Oh, okay. I can um, transfer you to the person who does that. So let me transfer you over to her. Okay. Caroline and recruiting. How can I help you? Hey, Caroline. How you doing? 
fine, thank you. How are you? I'm fine, thank you, thank you. My name's Sharon. Uh, I was just talking to another young lady, but I don't think she was too much interested in talking. Um, I'd spoken with uh, Edwin uh, Rodriguez. He's a driver for you, for you guys. Okay, so with Driveaway, we are non-force dispatch over the road commercial transportation company. Okay. Uh, you, you do it's an independent contractor, so your transportation expenses, as well as your lodging, food, are your own expenses. Okay, so this is uh, 1099. Will you guys, will you guys be the one to provide the vehicle? We do. You are actually driving the, com the customer's commercial vehicles. Oh, okay, okay. So we will be driving their, um, like their RVs, their uh, pickups, and stuff like that. Not pickups. No, you'll be driving um, tractors, motorized RVs, straight trucks, box trucks. It really just depends on what you're qualified to drive. Okay, okay. Uh, what what areas you guys hire out of? Right now, there's a hiring freeze in the majority of the U.S. Where are you coming out of? I'm out of Ohio. Okay, so we we are hiring out of Ohio. Oh, okay, okay. All right. Um, where's your terminals located at? Where's the main terminal? Because it, uh, Edwin told me that I believe you guys only have one terminal. No, we've got several, um, but we don't typically pick up from the terminals. So our home office is located in McDonough, Georgia. Okay. Uh, there is a terminal in Springfield, Ohio, but the majority of our pickups take place at the customer's yard. Okay, okay. Now let me ask you this, is there a sign-on bonus? No. If I'm interested in coming on board with your with, with the company, what what all I gotta what all I gotta do? What would be the experience I need to bring with me? If you're a skill holder, we require six months over the road verifiable commercial driving experience. Mm -hmm. For non CDL, we require at least three months over the road non or um, three months over the road commercial experience that we can verify. Okay, okay. So you guys hire both. CDL and non-CDL drivers? Correct. Alright. Where would the uh, orientation take place? Springfield, Ohio would be the closest one to you. Alright. Do we uh, do we get paid for orientation? And how long? No, is sir, you do not. How it's a two-day orientation. We cover your motel room for one night. Okay. Okay. Uh, for pre-employment, uh, do you guys require hair follicle tests? We require a drug screen. It's typically a urine test. All right. Um, what's your policies on felons? If it's in the last seven years, we do not. We have a zero tolerance. Um, outside of seven years, we look at it a case by case. Edwin told me that you guys are percentage based, so you you guys don't do CPM. We don't do what? I'm sorry? Y'all don't do CP cent per mile? We do. It, the pay range is typically between 50 to 65 cents a mile. Oh, okay. Depending on what you're moving and where you're moving it to. Okay. So it's that, does that, is that different between what I, what I will come in as, uh, what my qualification as? No. All right. So what will be my starting CPM as a CDL three year? Semi truck driver between 50 cents and 65 cents a mile, depending on what you're moving and where you're moving. There's, there's not a straight base starting, yeah. No. Okay, uh, is that including um, incentives like uh, safety incentives, fuel incentives? No, okay, so that is no, just that's just strictly your line haul. The safety bonus that's done in the driveway division is going to be done separately. That has nothing to do with your line haul. Okay. The you, fuel is typically done with a fuel surcharge. It's a lump sum amount of money that's given at the time of dispatch. It's designed to cover the majority of the fuel from pickup to delivery. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it covers all of it. Sometimes it does not. But in the event that it does not cover the fuel in its entirety, it is the driver's responsibility to fuel the truck. All right. So this is the um, the driveway uh, uh, division of the company. How how many divisions right. how many divisions do you guys actually have? We have several. We've got uh, distribution services. We've got an international transport. We've got flatbed. We've 
got different divisions. Alright. We've got a toter division. So for like the different uh the different divisions, would would it be safe to say that drive away will probably be the easiest division for a new driver to come into? Uh say straight out of school or something like that? Driver is the only division that will allow student drivers. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Do you guys, uh, now if a student driver comes out of school, now this is just a question. Um, a student driver that comes out of school, you guys will put him with a trainer, right? No, we do not train. We do not offer any kind of training. Oh, okay. So this is basically if they should know what they're doing right off the rip, pretty much, right? Correct. Very good. Do you guys offer pay advances? So say if I get hired on and that first week, you know, I'm waiting for my check for the first week, but I need to grab some money. We don't pay by the week. Oh. How, how do you guys? We pay, by, we pay by the load. Oh, you pay by the load. You're advanced 70% at the time of dispatch along with your fuel surcharge up to $550. You're settled out with your final settlement on that load within 24 hours of receiving your delivery paperwork. So in other words, we get paid by the day. I would get paid 25, I mean 25, 24 hours later? Correct. Oh, awesome. That's Once we receive your delivery paperwork, if you wait two days after you deliver to send in your paperwork, then obviously your settlement's going to be delayed. Okay, okay. How often, how often do you guys do pay increases? We don't do pay increases, or you're an independent contractor. Oh, okay, okay. You don't have benefits. So it's a ten nine. So it's ten ninety nine straight. Yes. Okay, so that means you guys don't offer per diem either. No, we do not. Okay. Your overhead expenses are going to be your own, um, as far as your transportation to get to your point of dispatch, lodging, and food. You're contracted with us from the point of pickup to the point of delivery. Okay. Now let me ask you this: um, Is it now since you just mentioned that that we're contracted from the from the point of uh, pickup and the point of delivery? Uh, are we still contracted under you guys? Uh, if we want to do something else with you, do we got to sign another contract, or are we contracted after we sign the paperwork? We work with you guys. You will sign a contract in your orientation uh -huh. that will explain that you are an independent contractor, that you are paid pound per mile, that there are no, no employee benefits, you're not an employee driver, you're not a company driver, and that stuff. So you'll have access to our load board, you'll have access to that, but as far as your pay goes, you're only contracted with us from the point of pickup to the point of delivery. Okay, okay. So we can, so we can... We can book our own loads. We we won't have no uh, no dispatcher watching over us. Or anything no, you do have that. a dispatcher. Oh, you'll we do have a okay. load board. Yeah, you'll have access to our load board. Everything on our load board is going to be assigned to a dispatcher, and that'll be your point of contact. Okay. But you don't have an assigned dispatcher. Okay, okay, okay. Um, so no benefits because I'm a 1099. Do you guys uh Correct. Do you guys require hazmat? How many, how many miles a week I can average with you guys? I can't give you an average because the majority of our stuff is going to be spot bid by the customer. So it really just depends on how often you're running, what your logs are letting you run, stuff like that. So I can't give you an average. I can tell you that our load board typically has between 100 and 400 loads a day that you can look at. Um, but as far as booking them and stuff like that, I, I can't give you an average on the miles. Now, since I'll, since I'll be booking my own loads, would I be in competition with anybody else uh, for those loads after I pick out the load that I want? You'll have, they're done on a first-come, first-served basis. So if you call and there's already a driver that's looking into that, then yes. Okay, okay. Um, what else what, what else about uh, drive away that you can that, that you can tell me if I haven't uh, if I haven't asked? 
that's pretty much it. I mean, the one thing with driveway that you need to grasp is that the transportation is going to be completely your responsibility. Um, that load board is given as a resource, so you'll be able to pre-plan your second trip, or you'll be able to at least see what's coming out of a, of a specific location where you're delivering. Um, the main thing you need to understand outside of that transportation is that you are an independent contractor. So as far as benefits, as far as anything like that, like that's going to be completely your budget, and that does not handle your money as far as budgeting goes. We're not a bank, we're not a financial institution, so you're getting paid to do a job, and that those terms are agreed upon before you di before you dispatch. Okay. Okay. Well, let me. That, that sounds uh, pretty interesting. I mean, that's that sounds pretty good for uh, for the driveway division. Um. What other what other divisions that I that I could probably do? You're breaking up, sir. I can't hear you. I'm sorry. Can you hear me? Hello. There you have it. Uh, I lost contact, being that uh, I'm riding through Iowa right now, and uh, we lost contact. But that's the little bit of information about the driveway division of Benny. One of our driver recruiting specialists will be with you shortly. Good morning. Thank you for choosing Benny Motor Express. My name is Cody. How may I help you? Hey, Cody. How's it going, man? What's going great, man? Who's this, Chris? Uh, no, this is Sean. Just Vegas. <laughs> oh, Sean, Sean, yes, Sean, yes. Sean. Who? Uh, I just got finished. Oh, for you. I just got finished talking to somebody in the in the uh, driveway division of uh, Bennett, but I want I want yes, sir. I want to know a little bit more about you know generally about the 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 company and what you what else you guys have to offer uh, for potential drivers. Okay, um, Sean, forgive me, I'm going to ask a couple questions because I'm completely uh, just pulled up a blank in my thinking here. So let me ask you, how much experience do you have driving tractor trailers? I have three years. Three years is good. And of those three years where all your employers say good things about you? I don't think they will have any, I don't think they have nothing bad to say about me. <laughs> I always ask. I'm, I'm at a... <laughs> I'm I'm at I'm at a I'm at a particular company right now that I'm that I don't have no plans on leaving. I already t I talked to uh, Evan Rodriguez. He's a driver uh, owner op for the company, and you know he was just showing me a lot of good things about Bennett. You know, being that is that the company is owned by a female. She has her own wing in the hospital. You guys have a uh, different uh, different. Uh, divisions so uh, you know I just took it upon I just took it upon myself that you know if, you know when it comes time for me to go on or out you know or lease for that matter to see what you guys have to offer well first Sean I like it never do lease purchase it's never a win never okay so never do that. No matter where, you're, no matter who's telling you, it's going to be a good deal. It almost never works out. One out of a hundred pay their truck off and own it. Okay. On the other side of that, mm -hmm. we do have a flatbed division. You have to have at least six months recent flatbed experience and no less than two years over the road. Right. And that pays sixty-seven percent to the truck. Your truck usually grosses around thirty-five a week. Take home is somewhere between twenty-one and twenty-five hundred dollars a week after fuel and expenses and deductions. Okay. Uh, we also have heavy haul divisions where once you qualify for that, I mean the money gets much much better. Um, but it takes a long time to get in there, so we won't get too de in depth into that. I'll just say those trucks are usually grossing, you know, between. 30, they're, they're gross and high. <laughs> Very uh, high. Edwin, um, they Edwin, make really good money. Edwin mentioned something about uh, about hauling ammunition for the government. What, what, what's, uh, what's, what's the uh, status of getting into that? We do have a BHAV uh, division that, that does handle the uh, arms and the explosives. 
And yes, that is a very lucrative deal. You have to run team. Most of those teams are man and wife or, uh, you know, male and female teams. We have a few that are father and son teams. And we have one set that are brothers. Um, but mostly they're man and wife teams. You have to have a government clearance. Are you former DOD employee or are you former military? Uh, no, I'm no, I'm not. It takes you about a year to get the clearance. Oh, okay. So while you're working here, we kind of help you get it if that's what you're looking for. But you do have to have a team partner to qualify for that one. And yeah, you make somewhat, sometimes almost stupid money. <laughs> yeah, you say stupid money. That's the trucks you see with those great big sleepers on the back. Oh, okay, okay. Now, um, now you yeah, they, they they generate good money. Now you mentioned the flatbed division being 67 percent of the load Edwin, Edwin told me it was 80 well I don't know if he might have been here for a while and they bumped him up but everybody starts at 67 pulling our trailer okay. you start at 77 pulling your own oh okay 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 now being that uh being that this is like uh 1099 do I gotta come in with my own tractor yes okay Okay. Absolutely, and that's the best way to do it, honestly. Like I say, anytime you try doing a lease purchase with somebody, it's usually a, a lose-lose situation. All right. The, yeah. So, I, so, out of, so out of that, I just got finished talking to someone in the driveway. Um, I would assume I would be able to pick my own loads. Yes. Oh, yeah, always. Yep, and um, but again, a lot of that is more like retirement guys doing that stuff. If you're a young man doing that, usually it's because you hate being over the road or you just got tired of pulling trailers, that kind of thing. Because most of the time you're pulling a bob or driving a bobtail doing that. All right, now these uh, these flatbed trailers are they already tarped or are they pre tarped or do I get paid for tarping? No, there's not really, I don't know if there's such a thing as pre-tarps and five-bed work. <laughs> no, <right? laughs> but uh, but I'll say this, one thing, good thing about Bennett is, and I'm, I'll never tell you I've never had to tarp because that's not fair to you. Right. However, we do have we do have a few trucks that don't even have tarps, but yet it, it, there's freight, certain freight they can't haul. So to, to be an owner-operator, it really makes sense to have it all because otherwise, doggone, man, you're going to run into issues. Um, uh, you're sitting sometimes, and the bottom line is if you're sitting, you're quitting. We don't want that to happen. So at the end of the day, we definitely need to uh, have give every make sure you have every tool available to earn a living. Okay, okay. And the only way to do that is to be prepared when you come in. Uh, let's say, for instance, you got you have some chains and you don't have straps, or you have straps, you don't have chains. I do believe that they'll help you with that and just take it out immediately out of the first check. Okay, okay. Now let me ask you this. Um, but, oh, go ahead, go ahead. I'm sorry. I was going to say your your flatbed equipment should be expected to cost you right around two grand, and you have to have a headache rack. Okay, okay. Now what about uh, what about a sign-on bonus for the uh, flatbed division? Oh. It will pay you a thousand. Well, we put a thousand dollars on the table when you finish orientation. Mm -hmm. Our escrow. Are you familiar with the escrow and what that is? Uh, I heard of it, but go ahead and uh, break it down for me. Just, just give you a quick uh, heads up on that. Basically, the company will withhold a total of one thousand dollars while you're working here as an owner operator. And what that $1,000 is for, it's in case that, you know, let's say you quit and then two weeks later, um, we get a bill for 500 bucks right. on your truck. Because that happens sometimes. So what we do is that usually, they usually pay out the, uh, the escrow money about 60 days. It's in your contract, but it'll be between 60 and 90 days after you terminate. Mm -hmm. Then they'll release your $1,000 to put it back to you. Okay, that's what escrow is. Now, when you finish orientation, we do put a, uh, when you do finish orientation, we put a uh, $1,000 on the table. 
everything you've invested to get to orientation, say you bought fuel for your truck or you had to replace a tire to get to an inspection, uh, what the inspection cost, um, any expenses like that, you just bring your receipts and we'll, we'll reimburse you out of your escrow money and then they'll hold, withhold $50 a week for a total of 20 weeks or until you reach $1,000, whichever comes first. Okay, okay. So that's, I don't want everyone to call it a sign-on bonus, but it, it kind of is. Okay. All right. Um, you know, $1,000, and then we'll put the remainder, what you don't, what we don't draw out, we'll put in your escrow, and that way you're not, we're not withholding that money for, uh, we're not deducting that money for very long. Now the young lady. Total. Now the young lady that I talked to earlier, she uh, mentioned that you guys had several terminals throughout the U.S. But my uh, my orientation, being that I'm out of Ohio, would be out of Springfield. Um, or would I or would I be in orientation somewhere else for the flatbed division? Yeah, with the flatbeds, we bring you to McDonough, Georgia. Okay. We we'll bring you down south where you stay warmer. <laughs> you say stay warmer, huh? <laughs> yeah, we can keep you in the south where you stay warm and just just we'll just freeze you out when you want to go home. Oh, okay, okay, okay. For the uh, what, hey, what's what's your what, now? What's your policies on felons for the uh, flatbed division? Um, as far as I know, that's uh. I mean, we would look at the bigger picture on anybody. If somebody had 10 years, we, we would probably look and consider a felony. I don't I don't know that, but if you don't have 10 years of flight bed experience, I would just encourage you not to apply. I got you. I got you. All right. Now you say we get a, a thousand. Uh, you say we get a thousand dollars right after right after orientation, right? Correct, and we'll put that all in your escrow unless you have, like I say, fuel receipts and things like that that, that you spent money coming to ask. I don't mean gas in the car, I mean fuel in your truck, um, whatever the inspection costs for the truck, that kind of stuff. Would you guys... Maybe you had to buy a tire to get through a DOT inspection, you know, to get to get your annual inspection done. Maybe you had to uh, fix a few lights or something like that. Right. Now this is uh this, now what's the benefits for for uh, owner ops? What's the benefit for owner operators to come and work for Bennett or drive for Bennett? Uh, well, you're looking at about most of our trucks are grossing somewhere between you know 150 and 250 a year, and we have some that do even better. Um, that's why you'd be an owner operator here. So I mean, do you, over, over, let's, and now that, you gotta understand, when you're grossing 150 grand, you're probably spending uh, close to 70 uh, just on fuel. Right. So but they, that would be your gross, and still, that's pretty good money compared, uh, you know, driving for somebody else. All right, yeah, so being... Plus, Plus, you call your own shops. You determine when, when and where and how you go home. You determine what you haul, what you won't haul. You make all those decisions. This is this is all 1099. No, no company. Trials. Oh yes, absolutely. So, absolutely, you you become the businessman. Okay, okay. So no benefits, no dental, health, none of that. Do you guys require hazmat for uh, for uh, for flatbed? No, no, sir. And I will say also say on the uh, you, you would never need that. And again, there's a lot of value being able to call the shops for yourself. Okay. All right. Well, all right. What's your name again? My name is Cody. C O D Y. Cody. Cody. Thank you. Just like. Right. Yep. Thank you very much, man. I, I'm not good with names at all, yo. I am not good with names. But like, like I, I the said, phone cut out on you, Sean. Oh, okay. Did, can you hear me? Okay. Now, now I hear you. Now I hear you. Sorry, yeah, you cut out for a minute. Sorry. I'm, I'm riding through Iowa right now, so yeah. The, the phone cut in and out through, through this little strip right here, 35. Um. All right, man. Well, you know, like I said, I talked with Edwin Rodriguez. He's a, uh, he's a uh, owner op. Uh, driver for you guys. He's been rocking out with you guys for about a year. 
and uh, you know, and I was sitting there talking to him, and I was like, oh, maybe I should uh, give you guys a call and get a little bit more information. So, Cody, man, thank you very much. I'm I'm glad you did, Sean. I, I appreciate it, man. Tell tell people good things about us. I'd appreciate that. I'll, I'll see you, Sean. I hope will, to shake hands with you in orientation one of these days. <laughs> I, I will do that, man. I will do that. Hey, what's the what's the number one reason, other than what you just said, what will be the other number one reason to drive for Bennett, man? There's, there's actually, I'm going to give you one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 12 reasons right now. You ready? Damn it, man. Go ahead. Number number one is our safety is awesome here. You, you're not a target every time you jump in the truck. You, you're just not. Number two is integrity. I'm never going to tell you something just to get you to hire on here because we're going to look each other in the eye every time you're here. And I'm sure as hell. The one thing I ask everybody is what should I told you different? So you never have to worry about a recruiter telling you one thing or something else happening. Number two, or number three is respect. We're, we're very careful about showing our respect to everyone. That includes customers, drivers, people on the inside, especially my log department sits behind me. I hear the way people talk to them sometimes and it makes them want to jump through the phone. Number four, it'd be quality service, Sean. It's important to us to, to not only listen, but respond to the desires of our customers and make sure that we have made sure that the driver understands that so he because if we don't tell you, how would you know, right? Right. Uh, number five is we have a strong spiritual commitment here at Bennett. Everybody, you know, we don't make you, you don't have to pray to anybody. You know, that's that's not what we mean by that. But we do have a good, you know, Christian values right here is, is absolutely very important to us. We also have a family culture here. Once you join this company, it's part of a big family. There's a lot of things I haven't talked about that you discover when you're in orientation. You should be like, wow, I've never been to a company that had that. And just here's one example, just one. We have something called a driver relief fund that we raise money for constantly. We're always selling raffle tickets. We're selling baked goods, stuff like that. And we put money in the driver relief fund. The drivers put money in the driver relief fund. Everybody here puts money in it. And the reason we do that, if you, God forbid, you had a flood, fire, or something like that, that driver relief fund is distributed from the drivers to the drivers. It doesn't come from the corporate office. It doesn't come from no management. It comes from that we have a driver board here that, that oversees all that. Um, let's see. Uh, learning and development, that's, that's an easy one. We're, we're always helping you to learn better ways to maintain your business whether it's a tax, you know, some tax strategy that we didn't know about previously, we'll share that with you. Or whether it's, hey, here's the best way to maintain this or that, you know, make sure you're sliding into your truck every week. Um, the next one would be diversity. We don't care, you know, uh, people, other people's thoughts, principles, and business endeavors. You know, bottom line is, man, we all have our own thoughts. Um, and we're very diverse in our culture here, but in the same sense, like I say, we're all proud Americans. Uh, loyalty, we're very loyal to one another here. Uh, I'll tell you, the, the people here make, I've only been here about 90 days, it took me a year to get on, Sean. And I will tell you that the people here make me want to be a better guy every day. Okay. And that's the honest God truth, there's no joke about that. Um, responsibility, we do take ownership for the decisions we make. And we're certainly not fearful if we make a mistake. You know, mistakes happen, let's fix it, let's go on. That's, Trucking 101, right? Exactly. There's just two left. Number one and is my favorite is patriotism. One thing you'll find here is about every fourth person is either ex-GI, ex-law enforcement, or has a family member in the service. Very important to us here. And the last and most important one to you and to, a, to, you and to me is financial strength. We both be, need to be able to pay our bills without worrying. Exactly. Um, and the company is in a very good situation, you know, very good uh, position to take care of itself. So we don't have, you know, we're not borrowing money, we're not renting stuff. We're, if we need it, we and we have to have it, we'll go buy it. Well, very good, Cody, man. Thank you very much. And you say you've been with the company for 90 days? That's all, man. And I tell you, it was a, it was a challenge for me to get on here because, number one, I'm an old guy. Okay. And number two, um, it, it, they just don't have a turnover here. 
Uh, we just don't have a turnover. Occasionally we'll have some folks retire. I mean, like when you ask me about averages, I'm going to give you averages, but it covers a guy who's about to retire who's only running one load a week. You know, and he's got his truck paid for. He's got his insurance paid for. He just wants that, you know, he needs, you know, thousand dollars a week. He's happy. Uh, we also have people who, who just get it every day. I always say for it and pay for it, right? Exactly, exactly. <laughs> and we got those folks out there now that are hustling. They're making good money. Um, but at the end of the day, like I say, man, it's uh, honesty is important here, and integrity is, is, is part of that. And it's just it's an absolute must. It is not non-negotiable here. If we screw up, hey, tell us. We'll apologize, ask you what we have to to make up for it, and we will go on. You guys have uh, a, We ask you to do the same. You guys have an open door policy, right? Yes, absolutely. All the way to the top. Now, especially, now, all the way to the top, explain, tell me a little bit about the female owner of the company, if you know. Um, wow. It's, uh, I have had a couple different uh, opportunities to have conversation, and I will tell you, uh, you get a hug when you get on, when you meet her. <laughs> okay. Uh, it's all about family. You become part of the family, and she is the patriarch of the family. So um, she's not demanding. She's not uh, she's just a very, very kind person who's worked very hard to get herself into that situation. And, and she, we're gonna work very hard to support everything she's doing because she's not only supporting herself, she's supporting all these families that are connected. I hear she has. And, uh, and I would say, I would say very good heart. Unbelievably good heart. All right, Cody, man, well, thank you very much, man. It, it, was, uh, it was a pleasure talking with you today, man. And I really do appreciate the time that you took to give me some information about Benny, man. It's important, Sean, and, and the reason I did this, even though, you know, sometimes I get folks staring at me for doing this, is because you got three years in this business, and with three years in this business, you need, you still need to be able to talk to people. People need to be able to talk and, and share and be honest with you and help you in your career. It's going to be a long career, man. Uh, I've been in trucking. I've been the owner-operator. I've been a driver. I've been all of it. I've been a fleet owner. And I will tell you that you, you learn it every day. And the one thing that really helped me in my younger days was the old man liked me because I was an honorably discharged Marine. And these guys would look after me. They, they talked to me like a dog sometimes, but, but they don't want to be that old guy who helped me by helping you, if that makes any sense to you. It's the right thing to do. It makes plenty of sense, man. It makes plenty of sense. All right, Good. all right, all Cody. Right. Well, thank you very much, man. I really do appreciate it, bro. And I would definitely you're welcome, Sean. I would definitely pass the information on, and I was and I would tag your name uh, so that they'll give you a call so that uh, they can talk to you because it was a real pleasure talking with you today. Thank you, Sean. That's very important to me as well, man. And again, it comes down to that's one of our core values, and by God, we stick to them. <laughs> all right, now. Well, thank you very much, man. You have a great day. You Listen, too. Be safe. Keep I'm... your keep your PSP clean. Everything you can do to keep that clean. Get all the inspections you want, but make sure you pass them. I will. And, I will. And, and this business will reward you greatly as you go forward in your career, okay? I will. Thank you very much, guy. You're welcome, Sean. Take care. Goodbye. All right. Well, that was Cody from Benny. What do you guys think? You guys think of Benny, man. I mean, that's something to think about. If I ever, ever, ever want to decide to go on a rock or go uh, 1099 and get my own truck, I would uh, probably consider Benny. I, I really would. I really would consider Benny. If I, if I was to go that route. Now, on the flip side, on the flip side of that, you guys heard me talk to, uh, to the young lady about the, about the driveway. Now that, you don't need your truck. Uh, that, you don't need a truck. You would drive 
you will be contracted through them to drive their customers' vehicle. Like, what do you guys think? What do you guys think of that? Uh, let me know in the comments below. And if you drove for Bennett, let me know in the comments below on what you think of the company and, uh, you know, get some advice for the viewers out there, man. All right. Well, that is it for this episode of Lockout Man Makes the Call. Uh, this wasn't a subscriber request, unfortunately. Uh, I will get to the next call will be a subscriber requested call. Uh, this one was just made because I talked to uh, Edwin. And I had a good conversation with him, as you guys could see in the uh, previous video. Well, that's it. If you guys have any questions for me to ask these recruiters out here, why? Okay, why? Okay. All right. Anyway, if you guys have any questions for me to ask these recruiters out here, let me know in the comments below. And if you guys have any suggestions for any recruiters you want me to call, let me know in the comments below. And until next time, tell me, why are you getting over, dude? You ain't going no faster than me. Oh, man, this, this is what we go through every day. Every day, this is what we go through. But anyway... Tell me.